Okay, this video is going to show a really useful update from S Self's Scraper. Um, this is used quite a lot by people with RetroPies to get the data for their ROMs, including the thumbnail image, the description of the game, the metadata like um, how many players, the release year, the publisher, and that sort of thing, uh, as well as getting the correct name for the ROM rather than the file name or whatever else might show there. So it really cleans up the display and emulation station. And as I said, it's used heavily for other systems at the moment anyway. There's a video I've got that shows how to run this for uh, consoles like NES. Uh, it supports SNES, N64, you can see the list here. And more recently it does uh, Lynx ROMs as well. So it's great for doing other consoles. But now, with the latest version, it has been updated to deal with main ROMs as well. And you can see it on the, where the URLs up here. You can see how to get to the, the scraper with um, the details for the Raspberry Pi and how to run it. And on this page where you go SL forward slash scraper forward slash releases, um, the most recent one four days ago, so that was, um, let me check, about 19th of January 2015, it's a new version 0 0.60, and that supports main. Now, the big advantage with scraping main data like this, rather than the other video I've shown you, the other video I've got about main scraping shows how to get the images as step one and then separately how to scrape the name data properly so um, get something sort of readable and usable but that's all it does it just does the names and the images that approach it doesn't do any of the metadata like um, how many players for example but the advantage of this it does it all in one so there's no two-step process to follow anymore you can just run this process it will grab all the um, thumbnail images and put all the metadata in except the only thing that's missing at the moment is the description of the game but um, as always the author here is um, really reactive and proactive listening to people's feedback and I'm sure maybe one day um, it could be added as well but it's always getting improved this tool so it's always worth looking back and seeing what new releases are on this page so the, the advantage with this is you run the command in a really similar way to how you scrape for consoles and it goes and grabs the image, it populates the uh, metadata like players and um, uh, publisher and it writes the gamelist.xml to the folder and it also creates the image folder and downloads all the images so it looks it looks really smart and uh, works well with main. So to do this, um, you can see a lot of this in the previous video as well but I'll just run through it quickly here. Um, you get the pre-compiled um, program or scraper uh, program for the Pi, which is this one here, Scraper RPI. Click that. It says, where do I want to download it? And I've just got this set up to download to a download directory. And uh, this is got brackets three, just because I've downloaded various a few times. Yours, yours would just say Scraper and Score RPI. Now I'm going to click that to open it, and you can see it here. You've got a license text and scraper file. What I'm going to do is just grab that scraper file, put it on my desktop. It's um, about 8 meg uncompressed, and that's it over here. That's largely done. Close that file. Now I'm going to open FileZilla. Um, most of my other videos show how this principle works, so I won't spend too much time on that. Open the site manager. I want to connect to my Raspberry, which is on this IP. There's my username and password Raspberry. Connect in there, and it goes to Pi. And I want to, in this demo, scrape RAM, so uh, scrape RAM, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, I go to RetroPy folder and the ROMs and with this is set up as 2.4 and if I go to the main directory that's where the ROMs are that run main for all. Um, so that's where I've put mine. Uh, there's various ROMs in there. Now I'm going to add that scraper file. So I'll go to my desktop, just refresh my desktop. There we go, scraper file. And I'm going to put the scraper file in that directory, just click and drag. Um, I've already got a version there, you won't get that message, but I'm just going to overwrite it. So you see it copying across to the pipe. Obviously, you need to set the pipe so it's got a network connection, otherwise, you can't do any of this. Um, that's copied across. So I'll just scroll down to where it's appeared, which is uh, where are we? Scrape, scrape, scrape uh, up here. There we go. Now, to make it easier to run, it's probably already done it in the way I've copied it across, but it's worth, it's just often less hassle to make it the permissions on this um, so everyone can write it. Obviously, normally setting everything to 
be able, everyone to be able to run that is a bit of a security issue but on a Raspberry Pi running Retro Pi it's not really a big issue so I've just said 777 on that file to make sure we can run it later that's pretty much all you've got to do in this um, in this FileZilla interface copy the file over put it in the main directory and um, and leave it there uh, now I'm going to go I'm going to minimize that I'm going to use putty to connect into the Pi uh, login is pi, password is raspberry, and it put by default it'll put me in the um, home directory, and from there I'll just navigate to retro pi, oh, and then I want to go in the ROMs directory, and I want to go in the main directory, and this is where the scrape has been uh, not installed but just copied to. So I'm going to run it like that, full stop forward slash scraper, and again if we just flip back to Steven Self's recommendation, if you run it with thumb only, it can speed things up a bit and it just sort of get the smaller image rather than the larger one. The only, you could argue, disadvantage of scraping main with this tool compared to the other video I've got on this is that with the other video you could specify if you wanted to use snapshots of the games or title images of the game. This is pretty much predefined what the image is going to appear like, but not that it's a problem, it's still a really useful image. So I'm going to run the command with hyphen thumb only. Now to run it with main, actually it might say it on this, yeah here we go, added main support with hyphen main flag, so I do want to say that I'm running this um, for the purpose of main like that, so I'd run full stop forward slash scraper hyphen main hyphen thumb only and hit enter, but before I do that I'm just going to see, I think the command with the scraper, so if I put two hyphens then help, it tells you all of the possible commands. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's just make that a bit bigger. And uh, run that again. There, it gives you, there's quite a few different flags you can use. By default, I find most of them fine, so I don't tend to change them. But um, if you want a different, um, right, but you can, there's various different things here. So you can specify image directories. That's one thing. If you don't have an image directory in the ROM directory that you're running this, then it will create one, um, which is really useful. Um, but you can specify paths, um, you can use different databases for looking up the hash files, um, you can change the ROM directory, you can retry different amounts, all sorts there. But by default, I'm just going to run it like um, for main, because uh, I think usually if you're going to use it on a console, you don't need to specify a, a flag at all, it just um, it just does it inherently, but um, I'm going to specify main and as before, I think hyphen thumb only. There we go. Now hit enter here, and here we go. So I think the first thing it will often do is check that its local hash file is current, but maybe that's not relevant when it's checking main. But you can see that it's looking down my zip files, match matching the hashes, and then grabbing uh, the relevant image for it. And at the same time, this is building a gameless.xml. Now, I'm not going to let it run through the 2,000 odd files, but when it when it does complete, you'll see that um, we get the images for the games, and also it's generated the gameless.xml to make it look uh, look the part. And what I'll do is I'll cancel out this and go into Emulation Station. And you can see the results, but um, it's it's a really useful new addition to the the scraper tool from itself on these pages. Uh, to get your main details so it's it's one less hassle you don't have to worry about using a, any other complicated method or doing it in windows and importing it across and quite possibly in the future this method would also bring in the description as far as i know at the moment there's not a scraper tool in the retro pie environment that will bring the description in anyway so you're not really missing out um and also i think i read on the forums that this tool is going to be in the future included in emulation station build so there might be an easier more combined way of running that when you've got emulation station so you wouldn't have to use the command line if you didn't want to not that it's particularly difficult you just set it going and it does its thing but uh, yeah all looking really good so now what we'll do is cancel out of that and obviously you'd let that run and complete and then we'll go into um, emulation station and see what it looks like but before I do I'll just quickly open FileZilla again, you can see um, in the directory when it's finished, you get an images directory at the top that puts all the images in. Um, 
like just like that really there's nothing special about that you can see the image that it's going to use they're all pretty small and the reason that in this directory I've got a whole set of images as well is because I've also scraped with the other method so I've got images that I'm not necessarily using there but they both generated uh, gameless files and I just briefly renamed them but what you'll end up with is a file like that that says gameless.xml and it'll be this sort of size um, under a, a megabyte anyway so about 900k or something I think I've removed some of mine so mine's a bit smaller but it's you know this sort of size if you see something that's 35 bytes it's not written it properly and um, one thing that's pretty useful to know actually is when you run this from putty or whatever make sure that the raspberry pi isn't running emulation station in the background make sure it is quit out of that because if emulation station is running it's kind of got a hold on that gameless.xml and i found it had trouble rewriting it when this tool was open so quit emulation station then run this tool um yeah and i can see the user pi can read and write to that file so there shouldn't be any permission issues and that's largely it i'll um, see if we can fire up emulation station now Okay, firing into Emulation Station, it's just processing those um, gameless.xml files that I've got for, that have just created for main, um, but also the other systems that I've got in there as well. So it does take a, a minute to boot, um, but when we do, when we get in there, it should uh, should have the main set up nicely, um, nicely updated. And you'll see the difference between this approach and uh, on the other video, how that scrapes sort of with the different images, but the more limited metadata. And uh, if you can do everything with one scraper tool, I'd be really tempted just to keep this one in and run that for everything because it's got a lot of systems covered now. Okay, here we are in Emulation Station and here's main. I go into main. There we go. So the first one there is 88 games. And now I've got my uh, image over on the left, but I've also got the metadata. I've got my rating, the release date, developer, publisher, probably hadn't got that info in the database at the minute, genre. Number of players last played and times played. Obviously, the last two aren't scraped; they're just um, logged by Emulation Station. But as you see, I can go down and uh, get the different images. Now, you don't have to choose. As earlier, I chose them only. You can choose get the full image. So that would probably be a, probably the same image, but just a bit larger there, um, more clear. But um, that's up to you. You can you can do that with or without. And as you can see, the only thing missing here really is, uh, admittedly, actually. Oh no, is a publisher there on any of them? I've got unknown or blank. I'm not sure it scrapes a publisher. But um, the one thing it is missing is the, is the description on the left there, the blank area. But that might be something that gets updated. But this is this is already, I think, an improvement over the other method because you get so much more data. It still renames the ROMs properly. And um, you can see, okay, this was out in 82 by Sega. Uh, it's a maze game, two players. You know, It's really useful information that otherwise is a lot more hassle to get get there you'd probably have to scrape it in a windows environment and copy it across somehow um, but it's i think more straightforward doing it the, the way i showed in this video earlier um, so again if you've got any questions about how to do this or um, queries about how i went about it put it in the comments and i'll get back to you or i'm sure other people will as well with um, their results using this method and uh, if you do like it please hit the thumbs up youtube like thing and if you want to subscribe for other RetroPie tips, just um, click the channel subscription and you'll get notified when I put more details up. Um, I'll put more um, videos up soon, hopefully, about either scraping or controllers, um, hopefully Xbox and PS3 controllers as well. But um, yeah, I think this is a, a big improvement to the, the main process and it certainly makes uh, the experience a lot better. Thanks for watching.